talked earlier about the strain of uh, progressive people's advocate that seems to run through uh, one tradition of American law, and I mentioned Bobby Kennedy Jr. as someone uh, who seems to me to exemplify that kind of thing. Well, his Air America partner, Mike Papantonio, is another. Both have turned the law against various kinds of polluters, especially of water. And both of them believe that the legal profession is still capable of yielding idealists, who in turn are capable of promoting and guarding a sustainable democracy. He's known as PAP, and PAP is renowned as lead counsel in virtually every major product liability case against pharmaceutical, industrial products, insurance, and stock brokering industries. Mike Papantonio. Right. History is important, isn't it? History is important for us getting a grasp on what has happened to somebody else. I want to tell you what's happened to us in the U.S., and I want to tell you how dangerous that is to, for, for our democracy and how it runs the risk of actually destroying what we, so value, what we value so dearly down there. In the U.S., there was something that was called the Sagebrush Rebellion, and the, a, a whole team of neocons, I mean really edgy, nutty neocons, said what they want to do is they want to launch Ronald Reagan into the world of politics. They were Richard Mellon Scaife, they were Joseph Coors, they were the Olin family. They were the people that put every dime that they could behind this neoconservative movement that has overtaken the U.S. right now. They wanted to launch Ronald Reagan because they had a very specific agenda. And all, the only way they could get to this agenda is to be able to convince the U.S. public of everything that's counterintuitive to them. They had a wish list. Everything on that wish list that I'm going to talk to you about is counterintuitive to anybody who's thinking. So, General Electric, he was the guy that they had developed, General Electric, for such a long time. He was the Borax soap salesman. Really not much to his career besides the fact he was that likable old cowboy that appeared on Death Valley Days. But they thought he had charisma, and he did, and they had been holding back. GE was part of this neocon movement. But what is it that they wanted? Here it is. They wanted to do what's going to happen to you right here in Canada. They wanted to take the marketplace of ideas and, and take it to where it's not even recognizable anymore, to where there's no diversity in idea. There's no options about an idea. And as a matter of fact, they were hugely successful. If I look at 1981 in the U.S., there were 50 plus independent organizations that had different ideas about what was best for, uh, for, for the U.S. And there were, there were ideas that were the spectrum of our democracy. Take a guess at what it looks like today. Five. Five organizations that control movies, radio, televisions, magazines, everything that you put your hand on that has to do with independent thought. They control all of that. And this is no, not even remotely an exaggeration of how bad it's really become. But so, so what was it? Why did they have to gain control of the media? What was so important about that? Because if you can make the marketplace of ideas go away, then you can have a wish list that you can deliver. Where did they start? They started with regulations, insidious. First of all, they wanted to do away with environmental regulations because they felt they couldn't turn a profit if all those horrible regulations were there. They did away with our labor unions that have always made our country great in the U.S. because they felt like it was cutting into their profit margins. What else do you do? You go after the court systems. You have got to have an infrastructure for delivering justice. They turned something that used to be a robust, independent body of jurists who would always look out for the little guy, would always take up the cause of the little guy. He had a key to the courthouse. They've taken the key away. I've practiced 25 years. All I do is trial work. That's all I do. I can't, work into, I can't walk into a, a courtroom nowadays where I even recognize what I used to know 25 years ago. So their idea was to return the U.S. to a point where 1% of the U.S. population controlled 80, almost 80% of the U.S. wealth. And you know what? You know where we are today? As I speak to you, 1% of the U.S. population controls 60% of the wealth. You know when those biggest gains have taken place? Since the neocon nuts brought their circus to Washington.
But in order to make this happen, you had to have a lapdog media. You had to have a media that forgot their role as being the fourth estate. They forgot their role of being watchdogs for the little guy. And in, in exchange for that, they were willing to give all that away for more profit. So they could squeeze another little dime out of all that money that they've piled up on their spreadsheets. The second thing they had to do is they had to make certain that U.S. citizens forgot what you cannot afford to forget here, ladies and gentlemen. You own those airways. And you know what? I hate to say it. I never thought I'd have to say this. I never thought I'd have to come to another country and say, you, the line is in the sand with you in Canada. You are the, high, you are the moral high ground. We've lost it in the U.S. The fight is right here. And you can't forget that those are your airways. Because if you lose, this en entire North American continent loses. We're in an abyss. It's, an, it's abysmal down there. And so Ronald Reagan, the Borax man, one of the first things he does as president, he signs an executive order that does away with the fairness doctrine. The fairness doctrine was very logical. It said if you want neocon nuts like Rush Limbaugh and Hannity and Ann Coulter talking their hate, if you want hate talk eight hours a day, then you have to have talk that talks about compassion and our care for other people. And we have to, we have, to have talk that talks about the wisdom of taking care of the least of our society. FDR understood why that was important. He understood you could not have industrialists gain control of the networks. He knew that. He, he knew it because he had seen it happen in Italy with Mussolini, where the industrialists come to Italy and they buy everything. And before you know it, peasants, people that can barely afford food, are thinking that the industrialist has their best interest. And the rise of fascism rose quickly. That was the first foot. The second, the second foot after the Fairness Doctrine, it was that we had to be able to have conglomerates grow any way they want to without meaningful regulations. So what ended up happening is Bill signs legislation that makes that happen. 1996, he signed, he, he signed the Telecommunications Act. And you know what? Then it all started to happen. Why did he sign? i got to tell you this. Uh, you know, people ask, why did he do this? It's more... It's more psychological analysis than it is historical, but here it is. Bill Clinton thought the media loved him. Bill Clinton believed that he was next, the next John F. Kennedy, and, and they were in love with him. The truth is, the tragedy of that love story, they never even had a crush on him, despised him, cost him his presidency, ladies and gentlemen. Who did that? The very people he empowered, the Rush Limbaugh's, the Hannity's, the Coulter's, all these people that he never saw coming. And his presidency ended up in a demise. All of a sudden, news is replaced by infotainment. Like, I really care who in the hell Paris Hilton is dating today. I think it's brilliant. Absolutely step out of your ivory tower and come and see things that are out of your um, sector, your business, everything that you do every day. It's just, it's, your brain's on fire. <laughs> Now the media, the conglomerate media, those five people in charge, all it is is it's about the numbers now, don't you see? It's not about content. It's about the numbers. The numbers are how do we make a better bottom line? And it all becomes important to do away with news. I interviewed Bill Moore not long ago. He told me, Mike, news in the U.S. is dead. They fired the best investigative reporters. They closed down their, their, they closed down their departments. And you know what they gave us? Paris Hilton. All of a sudden, news is replaced by infotainment. Like, I really care who in the hell Paris Hilton is dating today. Or I care that Britney Spears is going to have another baby and what the name is going to be. But that's called infotainment. And you know why it happened? Because the conglomerates knew the Ameri U.S. public very well. Here's what they knew. They knew we now read and comprehend on a 7th to 8th grade level. That's what they knew. And they knew we could give them entertainment. And we can ignore the fact that a U.S. president is committing murder every day in Iraq. Has murdered 70,000 Iraqi men, women, children. Because we want to wonder what the hell Paris Hilton is doing. And infotainment is replacing our ability to get our arms around issues that involve people's lives. And so what we did with Air America is we put together a team. Al Franken, Garofalo, Bobby Kennedy, myself, 
uh, Bob Glazer, a lot of these people you all know, they came, we all came in together. We said, we have to save this. This is the last message out there. There was nothing else. There was nothing close beside Pacifica Radio. They couldn't do it alone. So we put our team together, and we launched Air America Radio, telling everybody telling us it's impossible. People don't want to hear it. But we knew the difference. We had done the, what we did. We did our homework. We knew what it really meant. There is a hole in the market. And the hole in the market is because there is an oversaturate, oversaturation of neocon talk. And the market always takes care of itself. You can move into that. We know what the numbers. It's 42% of the population in the U.S. anyway are dying for progressive talk. They can't get enough, and that's what we've learned. Here's the positive end of this. It's given rise to something called citizens' media. But the citizens' media is rising up in the U.S., and you are part of this if you want to be engaged in Canada. There are so many parts to this, and all of those parts are important. First part, satellite radio, XM and Sirius. Your content, I doubt there's anybody in this room that could not turn out better content for your personal program than anybody working with Air America. You're, you're creative, you're great writers, you have a mind, you're committed, you're motivated. Content is all they care about. They're dying for content. Go to the satellite, satellite radio with content. How about this? Have you seen the documentaries that are on video casting now? Unbelievable kids that are 18 years old. 18-year-old kids that are turning out documentaries that really mean something to us. Or how about uh, independent newspapers, independent uh, 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 magazines? How about this? How about the blogging? 60 million blogs out there. You know what rises to the top? You know what rises the quickest to the top nowadays? Progressive content. A good friend of mine is Morris Dees. He's a great civil rights lawyer. I asked Morris one time, I said, Morris, how did civil rights, how did it come about? He said, Mike, there was no in, there's no one event it was this event coalescing with this event. It was an event that took place in, 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 in Seattle that coalesced with something that happened in Florida. And all of a sudden, like a quantum leap, those individual isolated parts all came together. And I'm suggesting to you that's where we will prevail in the U.S. Those isolated in, in, independent parts where we don't even know each other. We don't even know what each other's doing, but they will coalesce and we will see a quantum leap for the media. And it's, it, I hope this falls on ears that are willing to understand we've seen the fight. Please don't let it consume you here in Canada. Thank you.